Welcome back to the channel. Today we're building a mini diorama for a couple of 124 figures. Now the product that I'm using is Vallejo Thick Mud and the particular version I'm using is the uh, European Thick Mud. Now this product does come in a, a whole range of, of different um, colors you can get uh, industrial mud, brown mud, Russian mud, light brown mud, um, a whole 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 raft of different um, different types. So, uh, depending on what you're trying to achieve with your diorama, there is a there is a Vallejo mud product out there um, that will um, might be something that you'd like to use. So, the consistency of this product is like a um, like a like a spread, uh, maybe like a chocolate icing type type um, type of consistency. And I'm using a um, just a piece of offcut of um, a frame here just to put this on. You can obviously use a um, hobby hobby spatula if you want to, um, but I'm just making use of this piece of plastic. As you can see, it spreads very easily, so it's not too thick and stiff, it's not too runny, uh, it's a great consistency. And um, for the 200ml um, uh, container, I think it was around about 20, 25 Australian dollars, you can buy a 40 millimeter, sorry, a 40ml um, smaller pack. So if it's just a small diorama you're building, then maybe just go for the smaller one. I don't know how long this would last once resealed in terms of whether in terms of it drying out also on the dry time I think it's 24 hours for fully dry or it could be 12 hours um, I'm not 100% sure it doesn't actually say it on the jar um, but I think on one of the Vallejo blogs or one of the Vallejo videos they talked about the dry time and it was either 12 hours or 24 hours. Now in terms of the dry time if you wanted to paint the the, um, the ground so if you wanted to use um, a different color to or a contrast just to contrast the ground you could wait until it fully dries uh, and then apply that on by brush or airbrush. Now I'm not doing that with this build, I'm um, purely, um, I, I want to use it while it's wet so I can um, ad adhere the, um, the, the other um, scenery onto it as well as the figures themselves. Obviously you could probably make this from scratch somehow using sand, maybe dirt, um, perhaps some glue in the mix um, and water, but look, um, this pre-mixed pre product works very well. If you're doing a really large diorama, maybe uh, it's not good value to use this product perhaps, but I think it works very well um, and it's quite convenient and I'm, I think for the price it's, it's, it's worth it to be honest. Covering the sides here because these sides will show once that it's on its base plate. So it's important that those sides are covered. I'm sure there's a better way of doing this as opposed to holding it and getting it all over my fingers, but um, this was the way I did it. And uh, look, it, it is an acrylic product, so it does wash off um, fairly easily. So don't be too concerned about getting it on your fingers.
a bit more there to cover that side. Okay. Now if you're sticking ground cover on, um, I wouldn't be too concerned about the way the mud is sitting. Uh, I'm just using the label to now smooth that down a bit, but you can just leave it as, as it was. You can come back with a brush and use the brush to, um, from above just to create that sort of um, effect if you wanted to look, make it look more natural. but. So now I'm um, placing the uh, main rock feature here. So this is a stone that I came across last weekend when I was out and about. Of course you can use, uh, you can purchase um, stones. Um, you can get landscape um, stones that are made from polystyrene. Um, you can make your own, but um, for me, I had these um, found these small stones um, when I was out and about last weekend so why not make use of those uh, now what I'm doing is creating a, a, some spacing between these stones because I will be um, using some um, ground uh, cover between those rocks so I don't want those rocks all clumped up too close together now the way that I'm doing this diorama is um, creating most of that um, that ground um, cover on the back half of the of the um, of the diorama, and my my figures will be um, standing in the foreground. So it's really about trying to frame the figures um, with this diorama. Now what I'm going to do is use a old brush here to just combine some of that European thick mud with those rocks, um, just sort of dampening them a bit, just to make it look like they're integrated with the ground uh, a bit more as opposed to just sitting directly on top. So I'm kind of brushing on the thick mud and kind of just slightly pressing them down a little bit, um, just so that they look a little bit more natural as opposed to just sitting there I think the other reason why I would use Vallejo mud as opposed to just making something myself is that you can just use the amount you need whereas if you're going to make a batch of something from scratch um, you may be making up a lot more than you really need. So now what I'm using here is the Vallejo Scenery Diorama Products Wild Dark Moss. So this is small size um, and it's the 2 millimeter. Now as you can see this is getting stuck to my finger so it does have some adhesion at the bottom of it so if you had let the ground cover dry you could use the adhesive um, on the bottom of these things to to place them in place whereas um, at the moment the the thick mud is um, adhesive so I'm going to use some tweezers place them underneath um, that overhang of the rock there which is the most natural place for that to appear in nature moss is not going to be out in the open in the direct sunlight it's going to be in that shaded place. So the moss comes in some different shapes, slightly different shapes, some small, some um, uh, longer, longer lengths. So it just comes on a on a on a small sheet. So just lift and place. Very easy to use. Now what I'm using is the Vallejo Diorama Products Wild Tuft in Autumn. Now this is the extra large 12 millimeter size. And my strategy with placing this is placing um, them at the back um, just so I can build some um, depth with this, um, this scenery.
so you can see now why I've, I've left some um, spacing between those those smaller rocks just to allow me to place those tufts um, the tufts are available in different colors so this is the autumn so you can get some contrasting colors if you wanted to and just adding some more light here so you can see a bit more of what's going on so just using these smaller tufts now so what I'm using now is the um, the same wild tuft autumn but this is the medium five millimeter so I'm using slightly smaller tufts just to create some contrast to those um, extra large wild tufts so that's how they come on a sheet like that and just you just pick the shape um, that works for what you're trying to do now I could have used some contrasting tuft but I decided just to stick with the autumn for the wild tuft and the wild dark moss for the moss but of course you can use some different um, colors to contrast and I think that would that would look good as well of course you could probably make your own tufts as well but um, I'm sure there's a way to do that but uh, again this is quite easy convenient um, I can't remember how much I paid uh, I think it was maybe eight or nine dollars um, for each pack of these it's just very easy very convenient now what I'm going to do is take my base so this has been purchased from um, Amazon um, uh, wooden um, coaster and I just thought this would just be a really easy um, nice presenting base to use uh, just P for plenty PVA glue and obviously before I um, got started I made sure I cut this um, piece of foam to size so that I knew that it would fit um, on the um, on the base okay just drop that in place and if you get a bit on the wood it doesn't matter it just comes off very easily with a bit of water okay get some of these things out of the way okay that's better So now what I'm doing is just coming back with my um, my improvised spatula here just to fix up those edges and I can also use the brush there as well if needed to just fix that up. Now what I'm going to do is place my figures just to get a sense of uh, where they are. Now you can um, of course glue these to the base uh, once it's dried so place them remove them and then glue them again later um, that will probably be a more um, sturdy placement as opposed to just relying on the thick mud to hold them because as, as you can as you as you know that I've only placed a fairly thin um, thin amount here um, the other reason why I want to place them here is I do want to come back and place some more ground cover so I just want to get a sense of um, the ground um, so that I can then um, look at placing some more um, tuft on the ground just so that that front front of the diorama isn't so bare now the other thing I forgot to mention about the thick mud is if you're using tracked vehicle um, or a vehicle you can use the vehicle wheels or the vehicle tracks to run that through the thick mud to create the impression of the vehicle or the tracks you can also use a brush or an airbrush to also um, splatter the um, mud onto the vehicle and in the case of um, figures what you can do is just use a brush there just to um, just um, push that mud back up against those boots so it looks a bit more realistic and also just putting a bit of that mud onto the boots um, as you'd expect with these um, figures if they were walking along the ground you'd expect they, they would have some of that um, ground uh, mud on their on their boots 
So we'll place a link to the build of these figures um, and you can check that out if you want to see um, more about the build of those figures. Uh, those figures are from Masterbox, which is a Ukrainian company. So if you'd like to support Ukrainian made, I highly recommend checking out those Masterbox figures. Um, they, they were pretty good and um, pretty good value too. So just using the brush there just to fix up the sides there. Okay. Okay, so just uh, thinking through the placement of more tuft here, so putting a large one at the front. And uh, a couple of smaller ones. Just so that I just don't have that big amount of barren um, mud at the front. So coming to the end of the diorama now, um, this is just about it. So simple, easy uh, build of a mini um, diorama and uh, hopefully this gives you some um, tips or some um, inspiration for building your own mini diorama. I'm quite happy with the, um, the finished product and uh, Hope you uh, enjoy this and look forward to seeing you in uh, one of my future vi videos.